so hello guys welcome again to coders den today we are going to continue with we are going to continue learning javascript and today we are going to be treating higher order functions we've done functions but this time around we'll be going a little bit deeper into a type of functions that we'll call higher order functions but and, and and i'm sure we're all familiar with what functions are so higher order functions basically higher order functions are functions which take other functions as a parameter or return a function as a value the function is passed as the function passed as a parameter is called a callback so in short we have functions for example i'm coming you guys don't need this yet at least maybe i should just delete everything here Come in. Let me delete. Since you guys have the video, I don't think I need to be saving every single thing. Okay, I think. Yeah, then let me delete everything. So. So we have uh, coming. We have normal functions, and they usually look like this. Uh, if I use ES5, we have function. Uh, let me give it a name. Let's say demo. This, this, yes. This is a function, and then here we type uh, code to be executed and usually they return something they return uh, let me just say value so this is how a function looks like and if you are using es6 let's say arrow functions const demo2 is equal to this 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 these arrow functions same thing to be executed this and that this is how a function looks like basically and then inside this place you can pass parameters like a b c and so on and so forth and you can also pass default parameters for example a b and you can say the default value of c in case the person does not pass it should be equal to zero we talked about this while we were doing functions. I hope you guys remember. I'm just doing a recap of that class because this is like a continuation of it. I did objects in between, so I don't know. That gap there might have. I'm just trying to refresh our brains. Everyone can hear me, right? Yes, can hear you. Can hear you, Okay, Emmanuel, maybe you should increase your volume or something. Okay, so that's how it works. And then here too, you can also do the same thing. We learned the differences between them. That inside this one, you can use the arguments object, but for arrow functions, you cannot do that. You have to pass a spread operator inside this place, and then you can assess like whatever you want using this. So but now we are talking about higher order functions. So in the definition, they said I have other functions. They are functions that take other functions as parameters. For example, if we have a function here, uh, let me use ES5 for now. Uh, if we have a function, let me call it callback. Let me call it callback and then this. If you have a function here that returns a, another value, I can pass this function as a parameter here. Let's say call, let me just say call function, that is the function to be called. And then inside this place, I am going to write my code based on this call function. 
and then maybe like the result i want to do something with the result let's say i want to multiply it by five or something or this and that this and that so this function now if i want to call it and then i say demo and then i write uh, let's say callback for example it is actually going to solve this particular one it's going to solve this particular it's going to execute this particular function and then execute it after executing it is now going to multiply it by five i know what i'm saying is a bit confusing but i'm just trying to refresh your brain before we go into the real thing and then we'll see it here so again i other functions are functions which take other functions as a parameter or return a function as a value the function passed as a parameter is called a callback and this is an example a callback is a function which can be passed as a parameter to other function this is an example here let me copy and paste in my code so for now we know what this is so i'll just uh, come in and paste so this is a callback function i have to delete this i'll delete this this is a callback function this is it this is the function that is serving as our callback function and then this is another function and then inside this function we are passing this callback function as a parameter but now what if what if we actually have another function let's call it uh, i mean let's call it um, callback 2 is equal to n but this time around instead of multiplying it by 2 we are multiplying it we are we are raising it to the power of let's say 3 yes let's say we are raising it to the power of 3 i think making let me see function uh to be called coming something to try okay so as you can see <coughs> now don't let us focus on this for now it's true so we have a function this is the function the name of the function is cube and this function has two parameters the first parameter is function to be called and the second parameter is n and the value that this function returns is function to be called n multiplied by n in other words the return value that you are getting from this function is calling is the value that is gotten from this parameter as a function now multiplied by n that is it is calling back this parameter multiplied by n now we have a function called called back we have another function called call back two and they do different things now we all know that parameters we can pass in anything as a parameter if i pass this call back this one here if i pass it in as a parameter what is going to happen is that for example now if i say if i use the example here call back and then three that means the function to be called is call back and n is three so in other words it's going to take this function and put it inside this place so wherever it finds function to be called the function that it's going to be calling is this call function which is called callback in this case and then it's now going to call callback 3 now if you check what is callback 3 let me do it here console.log callback three. that is 9 so here it's going to be return 9 
multiplied by n and my n is 3 so it's going to be return 9 multiplied by 3 and that will give me 27 now if i want to call another function let's say i want to use callback 2 i am going to get 81 why if i do console.log callback 2 3 27 because it's going to because the function i'm calling the function to be called is callback 2 so it is calling callback 2 it takes in the parameter of n and then n is 3 and callback 2 of 3 is actually 27 so it's going to be 27 multiplied by n n is 3 27 multiplied by n that is 27 multiplied by 3 that will give me 81 so that is what you call a callback function so this is the function but it's taking another function it is calling back another function this is it which is taking it's taking it as a parameter that's why i call it a callback function so with this explanation now is there something you do not understand before we go on based on the that function to be called back is it like an inbuilt function or what? No, this function to be called is just a parameter. It's just a parameter. It's almost like me creating just, let me say, a random function. Let me call it demo or something. And then inside the demo, it takes in, let's say, parameters like A, B, C. And then inside, I want to, let's say, return uh, a plus b plus plus c and then oh I, I get it now ah uh, you get okay, it now I understand yeah mm. so let me console dot log it so yeah so it is basically a parameter so it, but the only difference is that it takes in a function as a parameter that's why it's called a callback function. So does anyone else have a question before we move forward? Hmm? Sir, please, I have a question. Ask me. Okay, why is it that, okay, like that instance where you used that parameter stuff, that you talked about that parameter, why is it that in some JavaScript code, they use E, just the ordinary small letter E? The thing is, the one you are talking about, you can use anything. The reason why they use E is because they were, I'm quite sure, the one you saw, they are working on events. For example, let's say, okay. uh, add event listener, event click, yeah. So they just use E so that, you know, E stands for events. You can use anything. You can use B. You can use any letter. You can use anything as your parameter. Okay. So it's just that E stands from event for event. That's why they usually use it. I think I also have something like that here, but I don't. I doubt if I used E. No, this one doesn't even have anything. I use E. I used E V for mine. So you can use anything. You can use E. You can use E V. It takes in anything as a parameter. Actually, you can use F. Whatever goes with you, it is your work. It's just that most of the time you are working with people. So to make other people understand that this is an event, that's why they usually use E. But you can use anything. So is that okay? Yes. Okay, so we'll move on. That's the first thing. I just wanted to make sure that we really understood that. We also have what we call returning function. And like this name signifies, it returns a function. And then this is an example. I have other function return function as a value. This is this is an example. This one is quite messy and well, you might be doing things like this, but you kind of really have need for it. Separates. So this is this is it. I have other function returning another function. So they are using the S6 here. I will, we have to get familiar with it. So this is it. This is the first function. The name of the first function is IR order. Inside of that function, we have another function called do something. 
Inside of that, we have another function called do whatever. And then in that do whatever, I order add parameter of n. And the thing is, we did scope. So actually, inside, this is the biggest, this is the biggest, uh, let me say, this is the, in terms of scope, we can call this now, anything like from here, can call it like the global scope to this function now. So for example, this n, this parameter was defined up here. So anything below this, you can use that n inside of it. Same thing, as you go inside, m was defined here, inside anything from this point, from this point downward, you can use m inside. t was designed, defined here, anything from this place downwards can use m. But unfortunately, where you can use t is so small. That's why you have to be a bit, not a bit, very well, like very conversant with scopes. Now, this is the scope of where you can use this t now. This is the scope so small where you can use m this is the scope and where you can use n this is the scope so that's why inside this place they're able to use these three n m and t so do whatever is going to return uh is going to return this that's what do whatever is going to return do something is going to return what is inside <laughs> what is inside do whatever and higher order is going to return do something. So if higher order is not really returning something of its own, it's returning another function that is inside of it. Is that understandable? Should we move on or I should go over it again? Please go over it again. <coughs> okay. Okay. Let me and write. please, I want to ask again, those N, the M and the T, like what do they stand for? They are parameters. They are parameters. They don't. You can't. Okay, I can. They are just ordinary parameters. I can change it to a. B. Okay. I want to ask again: Is that apart from them being a parameter in that console.log, where you put some value two, three, and ten? Do those value represent the a um, the ABC? is wait were you in a functions class no uh, i would advise you to go and watch the video again because i'm not going to go okay. over the same thing i said last time they are parameters okay. so you pass it okay. i'll just say it briefly here now they are parameters so you pass these parameters the same way we passed some parameters here so you pass mm -hmm. these parameters and then whatever by the time you are calling the function the values you put in will represent those parameters in order, of course. So that's how it works. Parameters, ABC. When I call it, I call it with those parameters too. So 1, A will be equal to 1, B will be, will be equal to 2, and C will be equal to 3. So yeah, that's basically how it works. So, does anyone else does anyone else have a question about this? Anyone else? We are all good to go. Hmm? Okay, I believe we are all good to go. Hello, sir. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, good evening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the last one you just presented, in what cases, what scenarios do we use them? Well, I don't think I've ever really idea. Okay, but let's say you want to, uh, let's say there's something you want to do. And then inside it, you want to kind of uh, repeat other things and you don't want to be writing repetitive code. So you can just make that thing you want to repeat a function so wherever you need it, you just call it. I think there should be, you know, something I was trying to do where I did that thing. Aha, this is it. This is a function now. <laughs> oh, this is actually a very good example. This is a function here, birthday SDM. Inside that function, I have another function called randos, which creates a random number for me. So anytime I want a random number, 
I'll just call the function. This is here. And then there's another function called for loop. There's a particular for loop I'm using. So this is the this is the for loop now. So anytime I want to use this for loop, this particular one, I'll just call it. I have another function called sum. Inside all inside this birthday function. And anytime I want to use them, instead of repeating the code, I just call it. I also have another function called check. So inside that check fun inside that check, I have a for loop I'm calling. I have a uh, I have a sum that I'm calling and then and so on and so forth. The only difference is that I am not returning it. Okay, yeah, I am returning one of the functions. Yeah, but it's not basically the same, but yeah, in that kind of scenario. <coughs> I don't want to be repeating code and stuff. Did you understand that? You heard me, right? Yes, I get. But I'll think of something to use it to do. Yeah, okay then. So, well, well, well. But if I wanted to do something like this, I know this is just a simple example. I would rather make this higher order to have these three parameters and then do this inside, and that would be all. But, anyways, remove. So that's returning functions. So let us uh, see where we use callback functions. For instance, the for each method use, uses a callback. This for each method is actually an array method. And they give us a perfect example here. Let me copy it to my, to my, to my. Yes, I wanted to ask you a question long mm. time ago. Um, mm. For methods, eh? Can mm -hmm. they be called functions? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. For example, the uh, you, we did. Uh, I think we did objects, no? Yeah, we did objects, and there were methods inside. Can you remember how we formed those methods? How we created those yes. methods? Yes. How? Okay, they were functions. Yes. Methods are just functions of objects. That's what methods are. They are functions of objects or for objects. Any you want to use, any when preposition you want to use. <coughs> so now this is an example of uh, they are using the for each scenario, and then the for each takes a callback. Now, this is an example. We have an array. Let me separate it. We have an array called numbers. Now, we want to find the sum of, our, sum of the array. If And now, to find the sum of the array, what they did is that they created a function that can find the sum of the array. But now, we know you know that array, they have different elements in them. And you might not know, like, each you might not know the number of elements in them but what you have now is to sum one of the elements is to sum one of the elements with zero like this is the first one so now this one is saying that sum of array it takes the arr as a parameter which can be anything this arr does not really represent something meaningful it's just a parameter that is taken and inside that parameter uh, you defined a uh, a variable called sum you assign zero to it and then it's taking a callback function inside of it and inside of that callback function it is sum plus elements that is one the elements you add the sum that you have before you add it to it so at this point now you don't have elements the only thing you have now is sum so this right here at this point now is kind of undefined but now, the for each method is a method for an array. And what it does inside, what it does is that it iterates the array. This for each is almost the same thing as saying for, uh, let's each, we've done the for each, we've done the for of loop for each of numbers. This is basically what that for each method is. So now it's saying like for each of numbers, I want you to do this. 
That's what it is saying. So now instead of writing for let this each of numbers, we can just say ARR for each and then open a bracket. And then inside that bracket, we will have code that we want to execute. But now that code, this for each takes it in form of a function. That's why we call it a callback function. And this time around, what it is taking is this. It's taking this function, this particular callback function, which is going to get the sum for us. So now, by the time it takes in this callback function, and our first value for sum was zero. So now, for each of numbers, so it's going to come here and say, okay, for each, each this time around, okay, but this time around, instead of each, let me say element, because it's element here. So it's going to come here, it's going to take the first element. Sum, the first value of sum was zero. It's going to take the first element and say, okay, uh, what is zero plus one? Zero plus one is one. It's going to go again to 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. Going to go again to 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. 4 plus this is this. I'm coming. Let me, let me do this. This is basically what it's doing. Um, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty. Yeah, this is basically what it's doing. This work here that we have here. From year to year, so that we can understand the logic behind it, is the same thing as what is written in this line five five seven. But this time around, it's now going to be from line five five four to five five seven. So it is the same logic behind them. That for each is also like it, it's rate, it's like a loop. But it is going to continue to loop till it gets to the last index. And then this is the callback function it takes. This same thing that we have inside our for loop. That's what it takes. But this time around, it takes it as a function. That is what we'll put here as to be a function. As to be a function. I repeat, it has to be a function. That's why they say they take in callback functions. So this a simpler way of doing this would be this. Uh, let me see this. Come in. So go to zero. He said ARR is not defined, so instead of ARR, I'll use numbers because it's numbers that we have. This for each function of this, this, and that. I have to end it at one point in time. Let me end it here. So now, this is let me go down, please. So now, this is the simplified version. So now this is our callback function, but this time around, we are not writing it outside. We are writing it inside our array method. That is inside our for each method. This is the bracket. This is the yellow bracket is the bracket for our for each method. So our callback function, we write it inside the array method to get what we need. Oh, let me see if this is, if this is going to give us what we want. Seven. Console.log sum two. See, sum two is undefined. Uh, function element this sum. Ah, okay. I get. Where do I use sum two? Sum. Hey, hey, hey. I'm coming. It should be two. I'm coming. Numbers dot for each. I'm coming. Let me cross check what they have here. Also dot log callback. The above simpler way is this. It's some um, we got. Ah, oh, okay, 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 okay. 
okay 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 so the thing is if the thing is this for each is going to is iterating through is iterating through this array through these array numbers that we have and then as it is iterating the value that we are updating is actually sum it is like this that we have here like this for loop that we have here the value that we are updating itself is actually this sum value here so here for example this that i have here that is taking this callback writing the callback function outside and writing it inside which is so much to me which i feel is so much better instead because it saves space so instead of writing callback function outside and writing the function inside you can just write it like this and then when you are using it i also advise you to use es6 because it saves space too all i need is this this time let me use elements too yes and then i have this any questions with line 563 to 564 ask your questions ask your questions while i pick a call ask your questions Hello, can you guys hear me? Hello. Ah. Yeah, can you hear me now, sir? You went off. Okay, for how many minutes? Since when? Like 15 seconds. Ah, okay, that's good. So, any questions so far? With this? Five six three to five six five, which is the same thing as this, and also the same thing as let me let me separate them so that you see one answer or one logic three different ways. yes you have this so there are three different ways to solve one question one two three but as you can see the best way or the most readable way and the cleaner way is this so do we have questions no question. We move. I do. Your network is your screen just gonna take. Mm, I don't know. I don't know what has been happening to that thing. And with the ginger that we, we dished out today, why are people not why are we, why are we not up to twenty in this class? I'm wondering what is going on. I say people won't learn this thing, but they are not ready to actually learn this thing. Oh, they have been asking questions actually, but it is what it is. Uh, this last one you explained, the, I don't understand it too. But did, did you did, do you understand this one? You don't understand it. You understand this one, right? I can't see your screen, uh, dummy. I'll be easy. I might do one. I can't see your screen, sir. Mm, okay. You will see my screen. Okay. So can you see it now? Do you understand this one? No, sir. I don't understand the this one is ah, the this four one. this one is the four of loop. It's like a loop. It's like saying for uh four of four of loop of numbers, right? Yeah, four of loop of numbers. So this element will turn it will automatically transform into each element. You can use any name, not because it is element. It will automatically transform to the value 
of each index of what you are looking at. For example, now, the first time is going to go through this loop. This element will be equal to 1. So it's going to be sum is equal to 0 plus 1 because the first value is 1. And then it's going to come again, go to this for loop and say sum is equal to 1 plus, to check what's the second element, 2. And it's going to solve, it's going to execute this loop as long as there is a tangible element in these numbers. In these numbers array that we have. So it is going to run till it runs out of index. Okay. And then this element is like the value of each element. That's what this is. So now that's the for loop. That's one way of doing what we want to get. Another way is using uh, a callback function, which is basically what this two is. So now, yeah, what they did is that they defined a function called sum array. And then inside that function, same thing that we did here, they said let sum be equal to zero. That is, a starting value for our sum, a starting value has been assigned to the variable sum. Then they created a function, a callback function. And then ins inside that function, that's what they did, what we did in our own loop. That's where they are planning to execute that code. But now you have what you want to execute. You need a loop this time around. And when it comes to arrays, arrays have what we call array methods. The same thing as objects. They have uh, the objects method. And there is one particular method called for each, which basically does the same thing as this loop that you are seeing here. That's what the for each does. It also, it is going to iterate till the end. So whatever you want to execute, you can write it inside so, this for each. Yeah. But this time around, That's... it does not just take naked code. It takes a function. That is, it takes a callback function. That's why they called this callback, this function here, yeah, and the name of the function is callback. They called it inside for each. But instead of passing through all this struggle, you can also write it directly, write your function directly inside the for each bracket. So your question. Yes, that line five five six, mm -hmm. that's constant callback. Is it more like a a mode to put in the function you want, or is the function itself? It's a function itself. I can call it anything and say call front, and it will still work. It's just a name. The thing is, they just use the name callback so that it will be understandable. That, that, that's that a function callback now. Function. That's that line five five six was 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 it working? That like, was it doing? This line five five six to five five eight is just a function. Is you are just creating a function. It's like saying, "Is this?" Let me let me let me write it out here in ES five. Call back. Let me use call back, and then but now instead of just an empty uh, parenthesis, they are passing element inside, and then inside that element, they are just in this this is what they are doing okay the thing I is this you. is just an anonymous function this one is anonymous so they are assigning it to a variable called call front this time around okay yeah this the one i created is a function that has name but this one is anonymous so they have to assign so, it to something with name so okay then line 559 is telling us um line 559 is calling the is getting the parameter from line four five 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 four that's the the element array then yes. it's telling it to um for each of the callback function created which is not for okay, each for, of for the callback function created for each of the elements in our array which in this case is numbers because that was what was passed as a parameter inside this function which these you know this array will turn to numbers now and then here we have numbers so like for each of the index inside numbers inside this numbers array it should execute this function 
That's what line five five nine is saying. It's like a loop. So, sorry, let me ask this. Okay. So, why is only OG asking questions? Every does every other person understand what's going on? Because it's like this class is for OG alone. <laughs> now only OG developed from this class. You guys ask questions now. Continue. So this one is like it this for each is iterating. It is going to iterate till the end of the index. And now what you pass in here is the function and inside our function you have a code you want to execute your a, you are going to have a block of code you want to execute inside that loop which in this case is our for each loop so it is going to execute till the end of time so it's basically this this is now the for each so inside now you are passing code but this time around they are not passing naked code you are passing a function so it is that function that carries what you want to do that's why it's called the callback function because you are calling that function back. Okay, okay. Are you is it like landing now? Like is it starting to like make it's sense? Landing gradually. Okay, yeah, that's it's cool. landing gradually. That's cool. So Does everybody understands. Ask questions now. I even have to move now. Yeah. Move now. It's like this one has many things. So we have yeah. something called setting time. So in JavaScript, we can execute some activities. Excuse me. Some activities in a certain interval of time. Or we can wait for some time to execute some activities. And in order to do that, we have something called set interval or set timeout. So now, set interval. In JavaScript, we use set interval higher order function to do some activity continuously within some interval of time. The set interval global method takes the callback function and the duration as a parameter. The duration is in milliseconds and the callback will always be called in that amount of time. In other words, the definition of the whole grammar they are saying is this. We have something called set interval. And now, this set interval, oh, it's even here. It takes in two parameters. It takes in the callback function. This is it. Callback must be a function. And I've not passed in anything, so it's saying undefined. It takes in a function and a time, which I think is usually in milliseconds if you don't specify. Like this, if you don't put any unit at the back, if I just put 1000 or something, it's going to be in milliseconds. So it takes back, it takes in a function. Let me just say function and also time. This is 1000 milliseconds here. Yeah? That is one second. And then what happens is that once you write this, it is going to execute this function every second that is 1000 milliseconds which is one second so it's going to execute this function every second every single second it is going to repeat this and in this case indefinitely as far as that page is still on as far as the code is still running it will continue so for example now if if i have um okay Let, let's create a function called uh console log and then uh, let it be should it take any parameter ah, it should not take any parameter so let's say it's uh, what it should do in this instance is that I want it to uh, let's say console uh, dot log Uh, um, eternal. So, if I call, if I do this, console log, and I'm saying, now let me quickly run to my console.log, this thing before. Yeah, uh, this. Uh, okay oh i think it's already on actually i think we have yeah 
Oh, this is it. Let me bring this out a bit so that we can see it. I'll save it now so that you guys can see. Immediately I save it, want to go. I see. Eternal. 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 Every one second, it is logging it in. It is writing eternal. 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 Every one second, it is executing this console.log function. That's what the set interval does. Can you see it's already 18 times? You can even use this to check time. Actually, 20. So you can use this to set time, anyways. So every single time you can see that it is, and it is going to continue Your doing that. Go here one. Eh? The what? Your brother go here one. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, my, my laptop no fiang. So anyhow, it's going to continue yeah. to long to to run and because i don't have a condition for it in this case it is going to run till eternity till my cpu just i don't know explodes or something so uh which will not happen in this case this is very small thing is running so i'll take this away we also have something called set timeouts okay let me save it so that it will stop good we also have something called set timeout, which is a bit similar to set interval, but different in what it does. We've done set interval now. Setting time using set timeout. In JavaScript, we use set timeout higher order function to execute some action at some time in the future. The set timeout global method takes a callback function and a duration. The duration is in milliseconds and the callback waits for that amount of time. So to me, uh, you should uh, kind of, oh, yeah. you should kind of, uh, wizard, uh, wizard. So you should kind of see this set timeout as kind of a bomb, as a countdown. So once it's done counting down, it explodes. It uh, executes what is inside your function. That's what set timeout does. And once it does that, that is all. Unlike set interval, that once it waits, it will do that. It will wait again. It will do that. It will wait for that amount of time again and execute. Set timeout will just wait and then execute. And that's all. Let, let's try it out. Ah, I should not have deleted. Yeah. What is this? Oh, oh, mm -hmm. ah. oh, God, I already loaded it. Okay, now it's okay. So I'll bring my mm, I'll bring this here and then we'll see now. Just watch. Okay, let me give you two seconds. So save one, two, eternal, and then you have it, and that's all. So you just wait for that amount of time, and then it, it executes. That's all. And then now, ha 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 ha. Let me let, let me show you something. Console a console dot log uh, next code. can you see so actually your code will still run like you have the set timeout even though it is waiting for even though it is waiting for that uh what do they call it even though it is waiting for even though it is waiting for a particular for yeah even though it's waiting for the time for that particular thing to be executed your your other stuff or the other things that you have next to it, they are not suffering. Like it is running uh, async, it's running, it's not running asynchronously. Yeah, it's running asynchronously. So it will not really, it will not affect your whatever you are doing. So feel free to use it and don't be thinking that it's going to stop your code from running. Okay, I have a question, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the difference between the, the set timeout and set time interval, that's the first one, is that the set timeout executes once. Yes, that's the difference. The other one keeps on executing and um, at, with the time interval. 
Yes. Of course. Now I also okay, want to ask. Continue, continue. I also want to ask this the the set timeout when it's when the time of it clashes with that of another code. Like this case you gave now, the code came before the set timeout. If I venture the time clashes with that of the other code, which one does it displace? Like does it I don't know. Is there anything that happens or it just displays anyone it picks random? No, it's going to display the ones the one that comes first now. It's going to display the one that, that comes first. They can't like they can't really come like exactly at least there'll be zero point zero 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 something milliseconds before it. As the thing is, as one is coming, it is doing it. As another is coming, it is doing it. As one is coming, it's executing, it's posting, executing, executing, executing. That's how JavaScript works. The thing is standard, uh, the standard, or should I say the JavaScript actually runs synchronously, like no, normally, that's what it does. It executes one after the other. Like basically, that's what JavaScript does. One, it executes what is on line one before it goes to line two, before it goes to line it goes to line three, before it goes to line four. Even that set interval that I did, it executed it. The only difference is that it is waiting for two seconds. But the thing is, one, one thing you should know is that once it got to line 574 and it executed it, it executed it right there. But now in the execution, it was told to wait for two seconds. So from the moment it got to line 574, it was already waiting for two seconds before it now went to line 576. But now line 576 is something short. So before two seconds, of course, that one executed. Then when the timeout is done, it is now going to execute was in 574. But it already executed 574. The only difference was that you gave a wait time for it in 574. But it already executed it, but with that wait time. That was just the difference. So I hope you don't confuse the synchronous state of JavaScript with what set timeout sent interval what they do. No. But yes, I understand what you're saying. Okay. Okay. Please, I'll ask, 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 ask. Okay. When ask you me. want, okay, the code in your console.log, that's next code and the external. Why is it that in the console.log no. on your browser, it is showing the next code before the external? <laughs> Did you see oh. did you see the set interval? This no, like when you use the set uh, when you use the set timeout. Explain to me what, what, what's, run, what's the meaning of this set timeout? It is like setting a two minutes time interval for it. Two minutes. Uh, I mean two seconds. <laughs> okay, two seconds time interval for it and yes. But it's run the next the console.log that next code below. It's run it before the S turn up. The thing is, when it go to five five seven four, it executed it. Okay. But in the execution, it was told to wait for two seconds. In the execution, the execution mm -hmm. of this code is that okay, print out console.log after two seconds. So immediately JavaScript saw that JavaScript already executed it and said, okay, I'll print you out after two seconds. And then it will go, but that will not stop the next code from running. Even if it's two minutes that is here, it will not stop the next code from running. That's what I'm trying to say. But the fact is it already started executing it immediately it got to that line. It's just that it's not obstructing the other code to run. What me I'm trying to ask is that why is it running the code below first before the one up? The thing is, as it is waiting, like I said, as yes. it already executed it, but in the execution, it was told to what this thing is telling it is that okay, execute me, but after two seconds. That is what line 574 is saying. So the JavaScript is like, okay, I will execute you after two seconds. Then it goes to the next line. Or whether it's two minutes. Okay, I will execute what is written here after two minutes. 
then it goes to the next line and does whatever is in the next line and the next and the next and then after two minutes it remembers it and ex and then executes the callback function inside so it had already executed this set timeout whatever whatever the only thing it was waiting to execute was the callback function that was inside of it can i explain it better for you sir yeah try try please okay can you hear me yes, I can hear you. okay let's say we have a race we have a race both of us me and you and in that race you now and um, they gave you an advantage of few meters you at my front you understand and i'm in your back but then i told you that when you hear the gunshot you should wait for two seconds do you understand though we have a race of ending the we have a goal of ending the race but they said you should wait for two seconds perhaps there's something you've done they use it as a punishment against you now for you to wait for that before you wait for that two seconds immediately the that gunshot goes i've started running and you are waiting so before your two seconds elapses i've overtaken you and I, I i got i got to the i finished the race before you, you are now at my back do you understand yes um i really i really hope you understand like i hope you understand that you're not just being yes like if you don't understand say it to i can but do you understand like at least only one more explanation you know, but... ah, maybe you should explain one more time Oh, yeah. okay so this this was going on let me just be very fast about it i are seeing that 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 method or all i call it now the 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 duty of that whole method that it to execute a function but after a given specified time so this way javascript works every line of code Line one will always ex execute, then line two will execute, line three will execute, then four. So, so that's like that. Um, set this set interval now. I'll set. Um, was it that's that line when you are running your code? All the previous code are going to be working when you get to that line. It's supposed to execute, but the execution in itself states that you've actually to wait for two seconds. So it's going to like start waiting for two seconds, but as it's waiting for two seconds, other things below are going to continue running. When that two seconds is complete, you are going to see that thing is going to now show. Do you understand? Yes. Uh -huh. So whatever time you give it to wait, it's going to keep continue waiting. All your other code on that are going to continue running, but immediately that time reaches, immediately reaches that time. It will work then once again your code is going to continue running. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shem. So good for each. Functional programming. Instead of writing regular loop, latest version of JavaScript introduced lots of built-in methods which can help us to solve complicated problems. All built-in methods take callback function. In this section, we'll see for each map, filter, reduce find every sum and sort for each we've done this actually it iterates an array element it iterates array elements we use for each only with arrays read it again please don't go and try it with strings except you have split the strings we use for each only with arrays it takes a callback function with elements and then the callback function it takes it can take uh, a callback function with elements um, index and array so the callback function that it takes that callback function itself takes in three parameters element element index and array itself so 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 yeah, this is an example. We did an example up there. So to be honest, I'm not going through this again. This was the same example we did.
and I am not going through it again. So we'll go to map. <laughs> so we'll go to map. In map, same thing. It iterates an array element and modify the array element. It takes a callback function with element index, same thing. It takes a callback function with the same parameters that this one to takes and it returns a new array. For each does not return anything, uh, for each does not return anything new. It does not return, please don't forget that. For each does not return anything, but map returns a new array for you. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Let's, let's, let's go through, let's do something. Let's, let's do practicals. We have the numbers array, which is right here. Mm. So these are our numbers array. Don't let us forget it. So I can say <coughs> numbers dot map. Oh, they say it produces a new array. So this time around, I can actually assign uh, new numbers is equal to numbers. Let's say numbers dot map, and then I will say each and every element. I want to do something now to each and every element inside the numbers array so i can use any name but just to make it make sense i'll call the parameter i am passing element and then i will see i will see um, elements it's just something very simple let's say times two so now this was our numbers before one, two, three, four, five. So, okay, I know what to do. I'll just do this. So this was our numbers before, but this is our new number. <laughs> These are our new numbers now. <coughs> yeah these are our new numbers as you can see our numbers before was one two three four five but now after using map i modified it and then i returned a new array and then the new array that was returned i saved it inside a variable called new numbers so now i have this a multiple of two two that is one times two 2 times 2, 3 times 2, 4 times 2, and 5 times 2. So I'm getting a whole new array with each element modified. So this is what maps does. I can also have, uh, let's say, uh, capitals is equal to, let's go with our dear Nigeria, Abuja. We have... Uh, Oh, mm -mm -mm. We have uh, Moscow. We have uh, which other country should I go for? Mm. Hey, hey, who is Lagos. That? Eh? Lagos. Who said Lagos? Los Angeles. Lagos is the capital of, of which country? Los Angeles. Aqua, aqua, aqua. Spell like crazy, double C. Yes, that's the spelling. Okay. Paris, Paris. Okay, we say Paris. Which country again? No. no London. No. Yeah, it's, it's all good. It's all good, my guy. It's all good. <laughs> so if I want to change all of this to capital letters now, same way, I'll just say, um, oh, <laughs> interesting. So, cost capitals, capital, and now let me just say caps is equal to, it's not going to be capitals dot map. Then each element, what do I want to do? I can name it anything. I can name it each. Uh, eh. Oh my it's god. Capital. 
Kapita. And then, eh, Kapita. Capital to uh, dot to uppercase method. No, 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 to uppercase. Look at where I think. Ah, to uppercase. So I will console dot log my. Hey, hey, I think there's something big running on this, on this, there's something big running on my system. Ah, I understand. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> well, you have this. So can you see? Now it has changed every single one to, yeah, I was able to specify what I want to do. I was able to, inside this place, I can specify if it is a long code now. I have to include everything in a bracket. If it was more than one line, we learned that about arrow, whatever, arrow, whatever, whatever. And then I would have to return it. So in case, it's not every time that whatever you want to do, I will be a one line now. You might have so many things you want to do. So you are going to write your series of code, uh, series of code, a series of code then at the end of it you return or final uh, your final value let me put it that way so is this understandable about map map you can return with map with for each you cannot return no. please note that for each is just like a normal usual loop for you yes that's what for each is it's like a normal usual loop for you so you cannot return but but in uh maps <laughs> i'm coming now ah i don't like to what is it why is it that we are going to we are ah okay thank you yes so Yes, for each is just like a regular loop. Why for maps and then we'll talk about other ones, you can actually return a value. So that is a huge difference. Actually, I'm answering one of your tasks right now. That's the difference between map and for each. For each, you cannot return. For map, you can return. For each, you can't really modify the array. You cannot modify each each of the array, but for what they call it map, you can modify it. Shikeno. Hello, hello, sir. Yes, yes, sir. But for each, you yeah. just like to return the usual. Um, to what? The, the, to return the values of the usual loop, right? I won't really use the word return in the case of for each. Display, like I say, to display the, the values of the usual for loop. Is that what you mean? For each is just to do something inside a loop. So now, the result of what is outside, of what you did inside that loop, you can get it outside. For example, we have... Hmm? Okay. Switch off your mic for now, please. Okay. So, so where did we use for each? Yeah, now we used for each. So as you can see, we had some things we wanted to execute inside. So based on what we executed inside, some values were changed. In our case, only one uh, variable, like we had been changing the value inside one particular variable, which is sum. Element is like each of the, element is just each of the array itself. We have been changing the value inside this variable called sum. So when we are done with our for each loop, with our loop, some things have changed. In our case, sum has changed. S-U-M, not uh, like in our case, S-U-M S -U -M has changed. So if we check the value of S-U-M after using for each, we'll find out that something has happened. And what has happened? What we told JavaScript to execute inside the for each loop. So it did not return a value, but it did things inside.
And based on the things that we did inside, some values have been changed, have been tampered with, but it does not return anything, basically. You get me? Yes. Cool. Yes, but in the other that you talked about, um, something also happened to it. That's the map. Because you were asked to modify it to uppercase. Yes. Exactly. I like that word you used. I've been modified. We modified the elements themselves. You get? Yeah, to me, I feel that the same thing. Though, that I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get. And let me let me read the definition for you again. Uh -huh, let me first read for each. It rates and blah blah blah. We use for each only with arrays. Yes, it takes a callback function. This and that. This and that. The array index are optional. Are they write that it does not return something something? This and this, this and that. We see for each. We use only for each design. Oh, they did not write it here. Interesting. But for each does not return. You cannot use return with for each. Then you try to be surprised. But for map, then this is the difference I'm even looking about. It's rate an array element and modify the array elements. And modify the array elements. That was why I like the word you used to modify. We modified the array elements. And because of that, we can return a new array from it. If you notice, for example, now, if I try to say, uh, this is how you know that something does not return anything. If I try to save this now in a variable, that is, if I'm trying, if, if I'm saying that this actually has a value, if it has a value, that means I must be able to assign that value to a variable or assign to a variable that value. If I say let value be equal to this and I console.log value. Value is undefined. Can you see? It is undefined. That is, this that I have here is not returning any value. It is not returning any value. It's, it's just like I'm saying console.log like I'm console.logging this loop. That's how it looks to it. And this loop is not returning any value. That is basically what it is. Yes. Okay, it's not returning any value because there's no variable attached to it. No, because there's no variable attached to it. It is like there is. Mm, how, how, how can I explain this? But it's supposed to return a value now because it's looping. It's looping from zero one. It's looping the numbers variable zero one two three. So yes, it's supposed to return. Yes. Value. What it's doing is that it is looping from zero one two three. Please switch off your mic for now. It is looping from zero one two three. And inside that loop, we are executing some code. So some code, some things have been changing. Oh, uh, and I've deleted most of the things we did in in last class. If I can see any loop here, that would be so helpful. I think I still have something from our loop class. Ah, this was one of the ah. This is that question. Interesting. So let me just uh, see if I can do something and bring this back to life, just from here to here. This is okay. So yeah, we have a loop here. So what is going on in this loop is just that this loop contains a block of code, and inside that block of code, don't know inside that loop. That block of code is being executing over and over time based on either based on conditions specified by that loop or based on if for example now if it's a for off loop now or based on the things that exist inside that loop either conditions or the things that exist inside that loop so based on that it is going to repeat and repeat and repeat the execution of the block of code that is inside so inside the loop Things are just being executed. 
the loop itself is not returning a value. For example, inside this loop now, I am saying new var to uppercase is equal to this space dot push i. So every single time it sees this, it will just do it. It will do it. It will do it. It will do it. And then when it is done with the loop, it will just go to the next line. It is not returning any value. It is only going to the next line. Things are just being changed in the loop. Code, code is just being executed in the loop. That's what the loop is for. You are just executing code inside, inside of it. That's what you do in a normal loop. You are just executing code inside of it. It's not as if you are returning a, a value. You are just executing code in it. And that's what the for each does. That's why it does not return a value. It's just like a usual. It's like a usual loop that you write like outside of a function. Like just like for something of this. Oh, I think I wrote one actually recently. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, it's like this. If I write return here now, how do I even call it? It will not return anything for me. Because code is just being executed inside. Yes, it's still in the loop. Yes, like it's just it's just looping. So when it's done with the loop, it will just continue. If it was uh I don't want to say this because it's too confuse me more. But yeah, that's how it is. I wanted to say something, but hey now to confuse you more and more. What's wrong here? Is that function that you on um, uncommented on top there? Ah, that's it's not closing. Uh -huh. Actually, we should be good now. Yeah, we are good now. So a, eh? so yeah, we move. I think. Okay, okay, we are good to go. So we'll move. And we have to move fast. So that's basically what map is about. Can you see this? Um, they just multiply the number by itself. That is, they squared it. Yep, and then it brought out a new array. This one's uppercase. Same thing we did. This one you can change it. You can even slice some parts of each of the elements and get a new one. If they ask you to get the first three elements, you know what to do. You know from where to slice, from where not to slice. Or from where to substring the whole thing and just get probably the first three elements and then it's going to produce that for you simple simple things like that you can use this for mad mad things or those are these are just simple simple examples especially when you combine them okay we also have filter mm -hmm. now we have map we have for each we have filter for each just it rates it does not return map it iterates, it modifies, and it returns a value. It returns a new array. Don't let me use a value because they all work on arrays. It returns a new array. Filter. Filter, what filter does is like the name. It filters out items. But to filter out something, you need a condition. So in filter, what filter does is that it takes a callback function, yes, but in that callback function, you have to include a condition there. And any of the elements, it is going to iterate, it's like a loop to, but any of the elements that fulfills that function, it saves it and returns it for you. So if it finds, if there are like 15 elements now, if one fulfills it, it saves it, it checks the next one, checks the next one, if another one fulfills it, it saves it, checks the next one, checks the next one, it fulfills, it fulfills it, it saves it. And then all the ones that now fulfill that thing that 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 uh, identify as true to that condition, it returns all of them in an array for you, just like that. Observe. <laughs> Let's see. We have um, where is that numbers array? But this time around, we are going to change it up a bit. So this time around, let's say we have some, you know, um, negative numbers there too. Five, 
um four oh zero okay that's good um minus thirteen uh um, minus twelve I think this is this is enough for what I want to do. So let's say I want to get only the positive numbers in this array. Zero does not really count as a positive or negative number. So let's say I want to get the numbers greater than zero in this array. What do I do? I have to filter this array. Like when you are fit, when you want to filter something, there's something you want and there's something you don't want. So numbers one in this case dot filter brackets method so inside uh, i want to filter i have to let's say let me use element two that is each element it, it, the name does not really matter and then element is uh, greater than zero let me save it somewhere or should i just console no let me save it let's uh, Let me just cast it anyways. So if I console.log console.log greater zero. Ah, this one that this thing is slower. I do. Aha, uh -huh. can you see? Now it gave me only only the elements that fulfilled the statement that I made here. As you can see, one, two, three, four, five, they are all greater than zero. And <laughs> don't think it automatically sorts it out for you if I put eleven here. <laughs> you might make that mistake. Can you see? It does not automatically sort it out for you. It's just that all these things were there. It, just, it will check the first one. Does it fulfill? Yes, it fulfills. It keeps it for you. Check the second one. Does it fulfill? No, it doesn't. Throws it away. The next one. Does it fulfill? Yes, it fulfills. Keeps it for you. And so on and so forth. Then, as it checks, like orderly, like that, it will just return it to you. It will not sort it for you. If you want to sort it, then you have to continue. You have to combine it with sort. Yeah, so that's how it works. You can combine them. That's a, that's a great thing. But I don't think we are learning that now. Oh, no, you can experiment with it. So, yes, we have that. Does everyone understand what filter does? Yes, I get it. It's more like placing the the condition. Yes, yes. And uh, like I said last time, it can be longer than this. Like what we have inside this, this might be longer than this. When you are done, just make sure you put everything inside the curly uh, inside curly brackets, and you return whatever. You return the value you want. Yes. Chito. And you can combine the methods. That's one very good and extremely useful thing. Madly useful. I repeat. So we have filter. We are done with that. Reduce. 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 Same thing. Takes the callback function. Same thing. Oh, this time around, the callback function takes an accumulator, a current, and an optional initial value as a parameter and returns a single value so now reduce returns a single value it returns one single value it is good practice to define an initial value for the accumulator value if you do not specify this parameter by default the accumulator will get the first value in the array if our array is empty, then JavaScript will try an error. In short, um, this is what it's saying. I'll now use it for... Wait, 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 I'm coming, I'm coming. Okay. 
So, same thing that we did last time, but this time around we are going to be using our where is it? Let me separate it for my eyes. I can't really. But these are our new numbers right here. So, so, so. Let's see. The simplest example I can think of for reduce is to get the sum of a number. Since they said it gives one value. And this time around, the difference between reduce and and what? Difference between reduce and for each is that you can return. Observe. Uh, we already have an array. So, so. Let this time around, you see that it can return. Let's. Uh, oh my God. You need to let sum is equal to zero, then sum is equal to uh, is equal to what's the name numbers one dot reduce. Uh, we have the accumulator and the current. This is you anything doesn't matter, just know that it takes the accumulator and the current. Whether the spelling of CURR is correct or is one or is a single R, it doesn't really matter. So, and in this case, uh, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. I don't even need this. Because I don't even need this that I put here. Plus call. And then. Let's see console.log. What to give us? Interesting. Let's do the maths 23 minus 12 plus 11. Or should we just have faith that it will give minus 6? Hmm? I just use a new, a new variable can calculate easily. Whoever has a calculator, then calculate it <laughs> while we continue. <laughs> ah! Oh, 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 I forgot to tell you something. One thing is, it is they said it is good practice, which is actually true. It is good practice to give an initial value. It is good practice to give an initial value. So, and in this case, we did not do much actually. So, I actually wanted to do something else, not some, but okay, it's all good. And when you take away the brackets, you don't need the word return. So, it is good to specify an initial value. In this case, it should be zero. Wait, did I get something wrong? I yeah, you did. Uh, oh no wait let me check uh -huh. i think something was wrong with one of my brackets while i was deleting so we have this, brackets. this this it took on the oh app, oh. App score. oh it was the semicolon that was the problem okay Ah, that thing that was going on. Oh, it even deleted the bracket for me. Hmm. Yeah. But normally I would have put it sha. <laughs> Lad now. Well, that's it. So this is going to be like your initial value. And then in this case, what I am doing is that uh I am how can I say it? I am summing it up. This is like the first value. ACC is the accumulator, CURR is the current. So at the beginning, my initial value for the accumulator, in this case, I have specified that it's zero. So it's going to go to numbers. So that don't confuse us. Yes. My initial value is, so it's going to go to numbers, zero plus 23. So my first uh, accumulator will be zero. Current is the current number, like, the number it is at. So it's going to 0 plus 23. So that's what my new accumulator will now be. That's why it's called accumulator. It's accumulating. 0 plus 23, 23. 23 will be my new accumulator. 
why my new current will be 12. Mm -mm. Why my new current will be minus 12. So it's going to go to 23 plus 12. That will give 11. So my accumulator now will be 11. Why my new current number now will be 11 again. So 11 plus 11, whatever that gives, that will be my accumulator. Why my current will be minus 13. Then to, oh, and so and so and so till it finishes. So I have a question now. Ask away. Yeah. Um, what's the cons from my own understanding? Mm? You just said mm -hmm. it's more like a message. It's more like what? The um the current is the messenger and the accumulator is current. Let's say I send the boy now to go and get set of images to store in the house. Then the, the current is the is is the boy that wants to pick the orange wherever it is it is and ah, please come again. No. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I'm talking about orange. Yeah, stop coming again, please. You say come again, please. I'm trying to understand what accumulator and current is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from understanding, what I can say is, let's say I send a small boy, for instance, to go pick some fire and store in a house, mm -hmm. in an empty room. Then the place they pick, they pick the firewood, the firewood is like 10. Mm -hmm. And I ask this guy to ten firewood in so 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 house. Mm -hmm. So the house, is it the so, then the other sets of firewood, is it the current? No, this is it. <laughs> if I get you well, the house contains the firewood. No, and the house is... The house is what? Empty. It's empty. Yes, ah, okay. and the firewood is outside in another section. Uh -huh. it's okay, like it's outside. Okay, okay, yeah. But yeah. I need to the firewood in the house, but before... Before before I start, I start going to pick the firewood, it's empty and that empty. Can we say it's the zero? Mm. The thing is, if you don't put if you don't put zero there, if you do not put zero there, it is going to start with the first element. The accumulator is going to be the first element. That is, the accumulator will not be zero. You get what I'm saying? The accumulator will not be zero. The accumulator will not be the first element. Okay, before before I do what I want to do, let me let me let me show you guys. It's going to work though. Ah, wow, that was it? Oh, Fox, know that it's possible that it's going to work. The accumulator might be more than zero. The thing is, see, the thing is, if you don't put zero, the accumulator is going to be the first element. So it's going to pick your first element, while the next one will not be the current one. You get if you don't give it that let my beginning be zero it is going to pick the first elements in the array automatically this is it this is it, this is it. it is good practice to it's just good practice to define an initial value for the accumulator if we do not specify this parameter by default accumulator we get the array's first value for example now the thing is it can be anything normally actually as if you want it to be zero you might actually not put it but in some cases we might have for example now it is six if i put six there you see what will happen come on come on can you see that it is now zero that means the first value was six what it did was that six plus 23 the first accumulator was six then the current was 23 you understand again this is this is what i want to, for it to be more than zero, I want a scenario ah, okay. where it's more than zero. Okay. Let me see what the, the answer would be. Okay, good. There's something I now want you to can try. make it more than zero. Something I quickly want to try. For me, the accumulator 10 or 20. I want to use one line I think if mm, no don't worry 
That's something I want to do. Hopefully it works. I'll just use template trials. Uh, Let's see if it will work. Something I'm trying to do. So now this is you can also use reduce. Reduce because you are seeing accumulator. The reason why I did this is because because you are seeing accumulator does not mean that it's it only accumulates. That is, it can only add or maybe it can only subtract. To me, see the accumulator as something that saves for you rather than uh see the accumulator as something that saves for you rather than uh you, i hope you guys understand what i'm saying don't see it as something that is adding up just see it as something that is saving a particular thing for you that is all for example now in this case let me, let me change it from some to uh eh. Okay, for example, now in this our case, example, now in this our case, we want to find the maximum number in the array, and we know that reduce. It gets only one value. It returns only one value for you. So if if things like you want to get the maximum number, you want to get the number that occurs most, you want to get this, you shall want to get one thing. Reduce is perfect for you. So the first thing is now that, but the thing is that we have to make sure that the previous number is greater than the current number. We have a variable called max. If the previous number is greater than the current number, we want the max to be equal to that previous number. So it is going to repeat this so as so long as there is an index inside the array. It's going to repeat it. So at the end of the day, our max is going to be equal to that particular value that is greater than the rest. Is that understandable? Yes, I understand, sir. I want you to add, I want you, I want you to, that place that the normal AC accumulator can be, is best to put is zero. I want you to put 24 there. You want me to put what? You know, there's a condi there's an advice they gave that we should always you know the accumulator to be zero, though it will still work. So I want you to put 24 there. Ah, okay, okay, cool. <clears throat> ah, and for those that are wondering, you can also use this one is for people like Dochi now. So, uh, are you happy now? <laughs> so, yes, I'm coming. Let me go back to twenty four is there. Or oh, what? What were you saying? Your, you know, the no, it's a negative number. Yeah, okay, so the accumulator, the first, the first value will come twenty four instead of zero. So it's twenty four plus um twenty three. Are we? Yes. Whatever the number is plus minus the next twelve. Will be, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, what I'm saying is, your condition you wanted to find the maximum number. Uh, I want you to, re I want you to return null by initializing twenty four. What are you trying to do? The number what there is the test number. Do you understand? It's like saying, Duki, I want to add all the numbers in the series, but I, the first number I want to add to is 24. So, but then the number in the series or the number you're giving is not 24 is not there. Yes. I don't know what you're This twenty four you are writing there now. Eh? What is the, the use of it? What is the use for? What do you think is the use of it? This. From the previous, from the previous example, he gave, he, 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 he had the highest number. Yeah, 
You get okay. which is twenty. I think I might get no, what he's saying. Well, so, uh, hey, hey. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, where did I even define? Oh, let me see if this will work. Maybe I don't even need to define anything. Let me see if this will work. Okay. Tochi, do you understand the question I was asking now? Hey? What is the question you was asking? Wait, let me even let me confirm though. Tree. Let me confirm something. Ah, I need to stop many things from running. You see, he's saying that I should put that 24 so that you know the first value of the accumulator will now be 24. So in other words, 24 will now be the IS number, since 23 was the IS number. So if I put a number higher than it, Wait. that 24 will now be the highest number because this is the first value. Like for example, I want to check if 24 is higher than it now. So this will now be the first value in this case. So, okay, so he's saying that we should add values to the array manually. Is that what we are doing? Yeah, we should pretend as if this 24 is the first value of the array. That is, it's going to be the first value of the accumulator. Okay. And what's the point of that though? Like, what's the use case of adding 24 to an array when there's already values in the array? No, why I want that is to understand the whole concept of the accumulator and the current stuff. You get, I want to be okay. sure that just what is in what we are seeing in that array, I want to be sure is dependent on the value of the initial when the value it was assigned first. You want, to ensure, you, want, you, want to, you want to you want to ensure that the, that this accumulator is the first value of the array, right? No, I want now the essence of that is as I think the curiosity on this accumulator and current now from the example it worked with what is just in the array, the elements of the array. If you if you don't think out of the box, you think it's just what we are seeing that is working with there can actually be a number that is not in the array that it will work with. And you, what you're doing now is you are adding values to the array through the accumulator. That's what you're doing now. So it's not like taking out the box. It's just basically, you're just saying, okay, you have an, an array of, let's say, 10 elements now. And then you add one more number to it, which is 24. So basically, that's what you're doing. Is that, is that what is controlling? Yeah, that's what you're doing now. You're adding an extra value to the element in the array. So if if you have to, if you have like ten elements now in the array, what you're doing is that you're adding one element to the front of the array, the first element, or you're adding a pseudo. Well, maybe like let's say not really a pseudo element, basically, but you're actually adding something to the front of the array, which is twenty-four. So now when the when the when the when the array start running, when the function start running and it checks the highest number, you notice that there's a twenty-four first, and then there's a twenty-three or twenty-two. Then you start putting based on that. Hello, I hope you're all cool now. So, can you all hear me? Hello, hello, I can hey. hear you. Okay, hey, yeah, okay, yeah, you. Ah, ah. okay. Don't, don't, don't. Okay, so we have another method called every. Very nice, very useful. So it checks if all the elements are similar in one aspect. It returns Boolean, that is true or false. And this time around, it seem, it's a bit similar to filter in the sense that what it takes is a condition. You pass a condition into it. 
But now that condition has to be true for each and every element or else it's going to return false. So if you want to check if something is true for each and every element, you use every. For example, where is that filter that I used? So console.log. What the hell is this? Okay, 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 okay. Numbers one dot filter, this and that. Okay, this time around, we are going to use dot every. Aha, my hand must be on some logs. Okay, dot every. So, as you can see, it shows me false. Why does it show me false? I am saying that is it true? <coughs> okay. Okay, don't let me use it. Say true. That would be ontology. So, does every mm -mm, no is every element inside the number one inside the numbers one array greater than zero? That's the question I'm asking. Is every single element inside this numbers one array, which is here, is it greater than zero? The answer is no, because there are some elements there that are less than zero. There are some negative elements here. So if I come and say if I change it now. Is it true that every element inside this numbers one array is less than zero? Is it going to come back and tell me, come on, it should load now, and tell me false? But if I say, um, this type of Ah, oh my god. UMBR. Ah, ah. Madu. Let me quickly check something. Console.log. Type of. To give me number. You wrote your number. number is not correct now. This no, is I wrote normal number. It was giving me oh I wrote numbers. Put in num put the number in a um, string. Ah oh, thank you. Number. So 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 Mm -hmm. So now it's giving me true, which means that every single element inside this array is a number. And that is true. If I put uh, string now, it's going to tell me false. If I put object, it's going to tell me false and so on and so forth. So it is to check if something is true. For example, is every number there? Um, I think that's the only thing they have in common, actually. They are all numbers. What else? Or even prime. Nah, they don't have the same well. thing. Okay, that's the only thing true about them, actually, that I can see for now. So that's the only thing that will give me true. So yes, boy. So so if you want to check if like if it is true for all of them, that's what you do. And then we also have uh the one I mistakenly typed before, which is some. So this one is to check if some if the condition that you put is true for some of the elements. That is, there are some elements that actually fulfill that condition. The difference between some and every, for every, every single element must fulfill that condition for it to give you true. If not, it's going to give you false. 
once one does not fulfill it, it's going to give you false. But for some, as far as you can find two that fulfill it or one that fulfills it, it's going to give you true. That is, yes, there are some elements inside that actually fulfills this condition. So, and that's the question you're asking. You're using the word some. So that's different between some and every. If I use greater than also, it's going to write true because there's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So here's that for that. We move from some. This is it. Bulls every true. Yes, are they all true? Yes, everything there is true. And then we have another one called find. I hope we are moving close to the end. Oh, I've done some. Okay, that's cool. Every we are find. So what find does is that it is going to return the first element that satisfies the condition. Filter will return the elements that satisfy your condition. While what do you call it? Uh, while find is going to fulfill the first element that satisfies your condition. For example, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Mm -hmm. If I say find the uh, no. find the first element that is greater than zero, it's obvious. Here is twenty-three. If I say find the first element, you can see. Let me add something like six here. If I say find the first element, you can see that is less than zero. It's going to give me minus twelve, which is actually the first element that is less than zero. So that's what find will do for you. It is going to find the first. There may be others like it though, but it doesn't care. It's going to give you only the first elements that fulfills the condition you set. Remove. So that's what find does. Find index. Similar to find. Only the only difference is that it gives you the index or the first element which satisfies the condition instead of the element itself. Find we give you the element itself, y index, is it with small letter? Okay, it's capital. Index is 2. And if we check, 0, 1, 2. The index is 2. So find we give you the element itself. Find index we give you the index of that element. So they can be used in touch actually. Let me, let me ask, I want to ask a question. Mm -hmm. Is there anything like filter index? Filter index. I've never seen that before. I'm I'm worried. God, what's funny index? Is criminal. Filter index. I swear, no, like, there's nothing like that. Criminal. Yeah, criminal. <laughs> Which is filter index? I won't oh, know. Ah. So what will it do? It will give you. It will give you. It will give you the index of. <laughs> yeah, criminal. Are you minding me? Yeah, it's a criminal. Go and write your code. <laughs> <laughs> write it. Go and write it. <laughs> Go and, go and check for their indexes manually. Can you look? Oh, actually, you can actually get their indexes using, I don't know, maybe map or something. Is that way? There should be now. Okay, maybe. Okay, okay. Okay, so maybe you map over them, then yeah, see. Yeah. Find index. Uh huh. Mm. Of which element? No, but the thing is, the problem is that. When when you filter when you filter every, when you map over every element, to return you the, will you return the ID space of that particular guy? Okay, no, we'll talk about it on the I think you should be able, I think you should be able to get the um, ID like the index too and all that. Like, like for, for every element, right? Yeah. For every every element. Get get this is able to get the location of each element. Just, just write something down. Let, let let's just let, I'm, I'm sorry for this. Please. Oh, no, no, let's try it. We have a greater, we have a greater, we have a greater zero here. Yeah? That is greater than zero. We have that array here. Yeah? Now. So, to find the index, to find the index. Oh, I'm coming. Let's try. So, I'm thinking, can we use a method for it or a manual loop? Let's use a method for it. <laughs> a method. A method first. Which method? Which method? So I'm coming. Which method? Hmm. Oh, you know what? Can we change method? 
chew, chew. Something just came to my head. Let's see. Let, 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 let me try something first. That's why. That's. Twitter. Zero. But chew, chew, chew. Dot. Should I use map? No. No, no, no. It's work. You have to put your arrow now. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jay. I was ready. I was thinking of. Maybe I just use L. Beta zero. But. Uh. But filter, should I use filter too? Or for each? I don't know. Well, I'll change it later. Filter then the element this time around. Then element go to L return. X and return. Uh, it's how do you do that thing, Seth? I'm coming. Numbers dot. I keep around to find the index of something in an array. There's one crude small way like that. Mm, let, let me say six. If I put six now, will it work? No, oh, it will not work. Oh, what's that way? I'm coming. Oh, there's a way to find index now. I think it's find index of. Let me see if it will work. Okay, you mean uh? Oh, okay. Is it only okay. index of or find index of? It's index, index of. Index of. Index, it's index of. of. It's index of. Let's see. Let's see. Index of. Oh, okay. No console. Uh -huh. log it. So, index, yeah, the index is one. Good. So, back to you. On numbers, but index of index of what? Look. We never know. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Okay, guys, we're just, we're just making an experiment. So you guys just like be with us a bit. Your class will continue after we're done with our experiment. <laughs> Work. It works, but it's not giving me what I want. The thing is, this thing is either the other way around. Numbers that filter. Uh, you're not assessing the elements in the filter now. This is it. Okay. I can't console up and let's see what, where is the now? area is coming from. This is it. Like. I mean, console log um, el from online two one five five one two or five one one. Where do you see five one two? Sorry, five one zero. A bit sorry, six. Yeah, let's see what el is. It's minus. Okay. Ah, okay, okay. It's meant to be the other way around actually in the first place it's meant to be the other other way around you get dirty too too many looked over it too way too many times I mean, let's continue the class later we'll, we'll yeah, go yeah. this one because i know 
this is an interesting story. Yeah, but it's going to be very similar to that, though. Very, very similar. So, so, so. Well, some we've done it. Sort, we've done it, but I'll go over it again. <sighs> so, sort the sort method arranges the array elements either ascending or descending order, depends on you. By default, the sort method sorts values as strings. This works well for string array items, but not for numbers. If number values are sorted as strings and it gives us wrong results, sort method modify the original array. It is recommended to copy the original data before blah, 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 blah. I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N. So this one, I sorted it in alphabetical code anyways. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, and so on and so forth. That's what I did. But if you want to sort numerical values, for example, we have this again. We have this. I want to sort it. If we do want to sort it, what we are going to do is numbers. If we just use it like the crude way, numbers dot sort. Ah. So, as you can see, this is bullshit. So now, if I console.log numbers, sorry for the strong word, numbers one. So can you see, this is the dangerous thing about it. It modifies your original array. So if you mess up while using sort, it is going to continue. In other words, your mess up will continue and you start building on top of the mess up and then you have a huge mess at the end of everything. For example, you want to sort in an order. If you just use dot sort for numbers, you are not going to like what you see. So to be specific, I can say, uh, let's say I have A, B, to give uh, two parameters, this is a function, and then uh, let's say A minus B. So, as you can see, it's going to give me in ascending order. That is, from lowest to highest. Because that is what I specified. That, okay, it, it actually returns, the thing is, it returns a value. If that value is negative, uh, what was A minus B? If that value is negative, it's coming 20, minus, minus 25, minus this, with minus 25 minus minus 13 if the value is negative it goes ahead if it's positive it doesn't go ahead true let me let me let me confirm certain array objects return minus one i'm coming i'm coming i'm coming ah did not explain it here okay i'll have to figure it out myself <clears throat> so what's minus 23 minus 25 so aha yes this is it if it gives uh if it gives a negative value it is going to for example now this uh in this way that i did it 23 minus uh 23 minus minus 12 is going to give me a positive number so because it gave a positive number that means the value before it is greater than the value after it so it is now going to take b instead that is the value after it if it gives in this case that i put if the, if this gives me positive it's going to bring a it's going to bring b and put it in front of a if it brings positive it's going to put a and put it in front of b in other words in this case now 23 and minus 12 this is going to give me a negative value. So because of that, it's going to take uh, what is here and put it in front of this. If I change it now, it's going to give me the opposite of the order. Minus A. 
wait. There are so many things I need to take away. Can you see? This is not the opposite of the other. Because what I said will be reversed now in this case. It will be the reverse of that. Oh, there's also a reverse method, but I don't think is it mentioned there. Ah, uh, interesting. So yeah, that's all about sort. You can sort this is how to sort uh, what do you call it? How to sort you work on number? Reverse? Why not? Yeah. Let's try now. It does. <coughs> Let's try. So this is a method. Uh, so the log. I'm coming on. Uh, I'm coming. Can you guys hear me? Hello? Hello? The thing is, can you guys hear me? Yeah, okay. I received the call. Yeah, okay. you can hear me now. I received the call. Okay, okay. So... So, do you try the reverse? Let, let me see. And... Oh, quite nine. Okay. And the magic apples in five, four... Three. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it does reverse it. I, there are so many things I need to stop from working, Sha. Well, it's understandable. Hello? Okay, this reverse. Normally, the sort is what was them. Uh -huh, what did you say? The, the reverse is just reverses. It reverses now. It does not reverse based on uh, the yeah, yeah. figures actually. It just reverse based on the index. Index. Okay. 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 Oh. Okay. So even if it is like higher or lower. Yeah. For example, now, about that. if it was yeah, that I reversed okay. it. <laughs> Although everything will become this thing now, or everything will just change. But okay, let's see. Console.log.log. Dot log. Dot log. Uh, numbers one dot reverse. Is it using? It just reverse. This was the original one that we had. So it's just reverse it based on the index. Can you guys hear me? That's crazy. Because it doesn't even sort it well. It does not. It does not sort it for you. So, and ladies and gentlemen, that is all. For this one, it's self explanatory. What I was explaining, whether it returns minus one or it returns one, which one will be before, before which, and so on and so forth. And then you have your exercises. So, is there anything you guys do not understand? This question, you guys have to answer this question anyways, because I took time to explain it. Mm -hmm. So, guys, questions, questions. Uh, questions, answer, ask questions though. Questions, questions. Mm -hmm. Yes, I don't know. I did not join the meeting on time. So when you're explaining the first callback, I don't get every detail on it. Well, you will have to watch the video on that one. All right. Yeah. It was it was well explained in the video. I'm quite sure of that. So. Questions, people. Questions, or you solve a question. Okay, who can tell me the answer to this first one? 
explain the difference between for each map filter and reduce hello ah Tuchi, can you hear me I can hear you what's in the apple guys explain the difference between for each map filter and reduce mm, our call names ah. let me try okay you are free to try the for each the for each is the short form of writing the for loop okay wait i think okay let me let me say something concerning that actually all of them iterate all of them are like loops it's just that for each does not okay answer the question just continue the way you know it don't mind me mr emmanuel uh, the map the map works with them um, yeah you've not finished with for each you've not finished with for each I said is is the short form of writing the for loop. Instead of us writing for them bracket, then we put our index and um, so, so, so now what's the Instead difference? Instead of that, we just write the for each. So what's the difference between for each and map, for example? The map. The map you don't want to read the the map has some um, particular um, function or is it function of a um, built-in function that it does not work with hmm. i know what oh, had it try um then the filter you just remove the because you saw the big shot at the top okay uh -huh. the filter it's filter it's, uh, that is how i can try for now Oh, 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 okay, okay. You tried, you tried. Okay. Uh, uh. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let me get myself. <clears throat> Mr. Ubong, can you help us, please? Mr. Ubong. What is the difference between for each map, map, filter, filter. and reduce? I don't understand the difference. It was the time you started there because I wasn't, I wasn't around. So where, where did you start? Like, when did you join? What were you doing when we joined? Like, where, where at what point? The time I joined, I was going back from the church. And I start listening while uh, walking. Ah, uh, okay. So you did not listen, you did not hear anything, like nothing at all. I'm just seeing, I'm seeing some of the but I don't really understand. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Oji, save us. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yeah, what's okay, the sorry. difference between for each map? Okay, I think it's busy too. Can you hear me, sir? Okay, yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. I'm the noisy place. Um, for each um, doesn't return specific. It doesn't return a value, even if it's the process is ongoing. Doesn't return a value uh -huh. for map, it the value. It's what with a map map uh -huh. modifies the value, the value of it an array uh -huh. to multiply the everything by two. You want to turn them to uppercase to lowercase, anything you want to do with the values in the array, the map does that for you it modify it returns a modified version of the array then for filter now filter is an upgraded version of map in the sense that it adds condition to what map does 
So let's say. Clap, 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 clap. One, one. What is so, the good thing? Let's say, let's say in a set of variables, um, you align capitals and you want to um, arrange these capitals in in the capital letter, that is capitals of a country, for instance, in capital letter, you know, um, map only can change it to capital letter. Now, filter can go extra mile to get, to arrange, to, to get the capital that have a particular alphabet. Let's say you want to get all your capital that has alphabet or alphabet A or alphabet C. Peter can also go extra mile to do that. We want to get your capital that that has only six characters. And Peter can do that for you. Mm. That type. Then for the last one, I, I, I can't see. So can you go back? If uh, reduce, reduce. Okay, reduce, 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 reduce. Ah, reduce. Okay. But the guy tries, uh, you try, you try, you try, no way, you try, you try. Make, me happy. Ah, make you happy, but there's something I want to, <clears throat> want to check, No, don't pull a return there. I will return. Wait, sure. I'm just. Uh... <clears throat> Mr. Oji, sir, the thing is, you said uh, okay. Uh, yeah, you are. Uh, yeah, a bit right. Yeah, you were right actually. But the part where you said filter is an upgraded version of map that it can check conditions and do this and that. Map can actually also check conditions. Map is like multiple puzzle actually. Eh, please. Okay, sorry. Let, let me let me help you out. Okay. Um. For map, uh, map does an array automatically. Like, you can check conditions, but you have to actually like use a conditional to check for conditions in map. Uh -huh. Like, if you if you have a map now, you have an element like ten elements. You can say for every element, return the elements. Uh -huh. But then, if you want to return an array that has like maybe say, odd numbers or even numbers. You have to use a condition. Mm -hmm. If statement, switch whatever you want condition you want to use. But for a reduce, sorry, for a filter, the condition is is the reason that it will return anything. Like you can't just say filter elements, like elements, return elements. You have to say elements, return elements that satisfy a particular condition. Yeah, perfect. Either elements are perfect. greater than zero. Or even you go to zero or something. Or this chart is the condition that you are looking at. Yeah. So, to feel, to return so what Tochi said is actually the perfect difference between map and filter. For example, now, if this was filter, it would have worked. It would have worked. Yeah. Ah, is there an element greater than zero there? Is it not numbers one? Where is numbers one? This is numbers one. Oh, I'd not return it. Don't mind me. Mm. So, three, two, one, bam. If it was filtered, I was there. It would have worked. But map would not have worked.
Can you see? Map is only going to return true, false, and whatever for you. But filter will return the elements that fulfill the condition. Map is going to change, like for example, now elements is going to return an array for you. For example, I'm not saying element greater than zero. It's going to say is the element greater than zero over the first one is true. For the second one is true. So it's going to return an array of what is being executed. While filter is going to check for the condition and then return the elements that fulfill that condition. So that's the difference between map and filter. So yeah, Mr. Tochi's this thing was perfect. OG you did very well, but that part yeah, is did very well. For me to help OG, I will say the guy on track. He has given me hope. <laughs> You're me making up. me happy. So, Good okay. Thing. Thank you guys for listening. I wish you the best in your tasks. Yeah, good luck.